As developers, we often encounter scenarios where we need to run long-running tasks, background processing, and schedule jobs in our application. Whether you are building web API, web apps, or microservices, background jobs is very important and you need to understand them. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement background services in your .NET application. So let's jump into the code. There are many ways to implement background services in .NET. So the first one is using iHosted service. I'm going to create a new class. Let's say I need to generate a report in the background. So generate report service. So in this class, we can implement the iHosted service interface and let's implement all the missing members. So we have start async that is triggered when the application host is ready to start the service. And we have the stop async. Same thing when we are stopping the application, it will be triggered. So let me add a quick log here. So private read only I logger of generate report service logger. And we can inject it in the constructor. And let me add a log information, start async. And we can return task.completed task because it is a task after all. And same thing here logger.log information stop async and return task.complete task. So that's basically it. Now we can register our service. To register our service, you simply need to do something like this builder.services.add hosted service. And you can specify the type generate report service. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and subscribe to my mailing list in the description below. Now, if we run the application, you will notice here the first log was start async, and then the app started. And if we stop the process, we will get the stop async method here when the application is shutting down. This is good, but you need to be aware that if you are doing some long running processes here in the start async, it will take a lot of time. So let's simulate that by doing await.task delay, maybe five seconds and remove this one and make the method async. Now, if we run the application, you will notice that start async is running, but our app is not yet ready. And then after five seconds or so, it will be running. That is a problem because you don't want to block your application while the background service is running. So to handle that, we can configure our host options to allow the background service to run in a concurrent way. So builder.services.configure host options options.service start concurrently equal to true same thing for stop these two are added in .NET 8 and will help us to run the background services without blocking the app itself so if we run the application you will notice start async is running and the app is running as well. But still, you should not implement a long running process inside start async because it is on the starting of the life cycle of your application. So to handle that, I'm going to show you different uh, ways of that. One of them is implementing the I hosted lifecycle service that if you can see, we have multiple implementation like started, starting, stop, and stopping. So you can tell when the app is started to perform some action, when the app is stopping to perform another action. But for this demo, I'm going to use the background service abstract class. Let me remove this one from here. And if we implement the abstract class, we have one method, which is execute async. Background service is actually an abstract class that implement I hosted service. So if we go to the implementation, it's an I hosted service and we have start async, stop async with some cancellation token registration to handle the cancellation of the request. So if you have a long running process that you need to handle, you should do it inside the background service 
by implementing the background service class. So how can we do that? How can we generate a report? So first thing first, let's add a log generating a report started. Then we can create timer, a periodic timer, periodic timer, and we can specify maybe we need to run it daily or maybe for this demo we need to run it every one second okay while timer dot wait for next tick async await here make execute async async and now yeah and we can pass the cancellation token so when when the magnum service is cancelled let's say the app is uh, stopped we are sending a cancellation token also to the periodic timer and here let's say we need to call some service so let's for now do some logging generating reports and we can do a try catch task cancelled exception we can log info stopping a service Okay, and now let's run. Generating a report started, and you will notice every second we have generating reports is being executed here. Let's stop and try to implement an actual generation of a report. Let's say we have an interface, I report generator, and it has a task generate async. And let's create a class fake report generator just to simulate. And let's add a log logger, initialize it from the constructor, and let's add logger.loginfo generating the report return task dot complete task. Okay, this is a fake implementation just to log that we are generating a report and then we need to use that class first go to the program.cs and register the service so builder.services.add scope and let's add i report generator fake report generator and to use it let's go to generate report service and let's talk about it so the background service by default, the I hosted services, when we register them using add hosted service, we are registering them as singleton. And we can't use a scope service in our singleton one. To fix that, we can inject I service scope factory. Let's inject that in the constructor. And here, inside of our loop, we can create a scope from that factory. So using var scope equal service scope factory dot create scope you can create an async scope as well so await using and then we can do something like scope dot services dot get required service of type i report generator for report generator equal to get the required service of i reports generator and then we can use it generate Okay, let's run. Generating a report started. And then you'll notice here generating the report. This is the fake report generator class that we resolved and create from our service provider. Okay, pretty cool. And that's basically it. This is how you can implement background services in your .NET application. Let me know in the comment below. Are you using background services in your application? And if you are using it, what type of implementation are you handling? The iHosted service, iHosted lifecycle service, or maybe using the abstract class background service. So till next time, see ya.